Welcome back. So in this lesson, I'm going to talk about the best practices for database security with special reference to MySQL 8 because that's our course. So today I'm going to talk about essential strategies to secure your databases and protect sensitive information from unauthorized access, data breaches, and other vulnerabilities. So this is particularly relevant for MySQL 8 users, but also applies to general database security as well. So let's dive right in. All right, so database security encompasses various practices and technologies designed to protect databases from threats. So the ultimate goal, of course, is to present or prevent unauthorized access, ensure data integrity, and keep information confidential. Now, with the rise, of course, in cyber attacks, safeguarding databases has become critical, especially for organizations handling sensitive data like financial records or personal information. For example, let's say a healthcare provider must secure patient data to comply with regulations like HIPAA. One of the most basic yet effective security measures is to use strong authentication, and we all know this. All database accounts should have strong, complex passwords. So definitely avoid using easily guessable passwords like password123 or your name. So if possible, enable two-factor authentication for an extra layer of security. So in, for instance, for example, use this MySQL command that you see to create a user with a strong password, such as the statement would be create user, user at local host identified by strong password. And I've demonstrated this in previous lessons as well. A use case example, let me give you that as well. So for example, a company protecting its customer database must enforce password policies to prevent unauthorized access. And not only that, you should be changing passwords frequently as well. So RBAC, which is role-based access control, which we've covered earlier as well, is crucial for managing permissions effectively. So instead of assigning permissions directly to individual users, assign them to roles. So define roles based on the principle of least privilege. For example, an admin role would have full access, while a viewer role would have read-only access. So here you can see uh, SQL statement like grant select on db.table to viewer grants read-only access to a table for the viewer role. Now, a simple use case would be, for example, in a retail system, only the admins should be able to modify prices, while cashiers may only have permissions to view product information. Next is encrypting data in transit simply ensures that any data transferred between your database servers and clients is protected from eavesdropping, right? So for example, use the SSL or TLS to secure data communications. For instance, you can use the alter instance reload TLS statement to reload the TLS settings in MySQL 8. A use case, for example, would be a banking application, right? that encrypts data to prevent sensitive financial information from being intercepted during transmission. Next is encrypting data stored in the database or encrypt data at rest, right? Basically to protect it from unauthorized access. So even if the physical storage is compromised. So MySQL provides built-in support for encrypting data at rest. So consider encrypting critical tables or entire databases. For instance, when creating a table, use encrypted equals Y, which means yes, to enable encryption. And in this example, let me give you a use case. For example, a company that stores credit card information should encrypt the data to prevent it from being accessible if a hacker gains access to the database files. Next is regularly keep updating your MySQL version. So keeping MySQL updated ensures that you have the latest security patches and features. Outdated software often contains vulnerabilities that attackers can exploit. For example, you can use the sudo app-get update and the sudo app-get update upgrade MySQL server to simply update your MySQL on a Linux system. So you can think of this, let me give another use case here. A tech company with a large user base should regularly update its MySQL instance to protect against new threats. So it's a great idea to ensure that your MySQL version is fully updated. If not, then simply upgrade it. And if you're using Windows or any other uh, type, you can simply upgrade that way as well. 
All right, restrict user privileges. Very, very important. The principle of least privilege simply means that giving users only the access they need to perform their jobs. So avoid granting super user or let's say administrative privileges unless absolutely necessary. For instance, use the revoke all privileges on DB, everything from user at localhost, basically to remove all privileges from a user. So let me give you a use case. In a content management system, for example, only editors should have permission to modify articles, while regular users should only be able to read them. So restricting user privileges is extremely important and here the following the least privilege and granting only necessary permissions because in a real world scenario we see that a single user has all kinds of permissions right to various databases or tables or whatever right but make sure that you only grant permissions that is absolutely necessary and if a user has multiple permissions and the user is not using those you can simply revoke depending on your own use case all right, next is, of course, backup and recovery. So performing regular backups are essential to recover data in case of loss due to hardware failure, human error, or a security breach. So test your recovery plans periodically, maybe quarterly, some companies do it monthly, to ensure they work when needed. For instance, you can use the MySQL dump command dash u root dash p, right, and then give it a database name and back it up to backup.sql to back up the MySQL database. So for example, a e-commerce website, right? Should have a backup system to restore data quickly if the database gets corrupted. So it's very, very important to make sure that you regularly backup and you should have plans, right? Or even disaster recovery plans. So in case of an incident, it's always easier to bring back your data. All right, next is enable logging and monitoring, for example. So enable logging and auditing keeps track of who accesses the database and what actions they perform. Now this helps identify suspicious activities or patterns that could indicate a security breach. For example, you can use the SQL statement such as set global general underscore log that you see here equal to on. And what this does is simply enables the general logging in MySQL. So for example, if financial institution or bank monitors access logs to detect unauthorized attempts to view or alter account balances. So it's a great idea to, of course, maintain your audit, uh, your database activity. All right, next is protecting your MySQL server. And how do you do this? You use, of course, firewalls, right, to restrict access to only trusted IP addresses. So you can configure firewall rules or use security features provided by your cloud provider. And it's always a great idea to have multiple layers of security. So, for example, you can use IP tables to configure firewall rules or set up security groups in AWS or GCP or Azure, depending on which cloud platform you're using. A use case would be, for instance, a company hosting its database in the cloud should use security groups to restrict access to the database server from unknown IP addresses. So for example, if you're using Amazon or AWS, right, it's very easy to create security groups and then you can assign users to those groups. You can create policies, you can extensively create a security uh, environment where data breach becomes extremely difficult. All right, how do you protect SQL, right? Well, SQL injection is a great common attack where hackers use where malicious SQL code is inserted into a query. It can compromise your database. So always validate and sanitize user inputs and use prepared statements to prevent SQL injection. For example, you can use statement like prepare statement from select everything from say university students where ID equals, right, give an ID name, question mark. So this ensures input parameters are handled safely. So a use case would be a login form, for example, that doesn't sanitize input could be exploited to bypass authentication and access sensitive data. So this is in a real world, by the way, is overlooked pretty much most of the time. So it's important to understand that you need to protect your SQL from SQL injection attacks. All right, to wrap up, remember to use strong authentication, remember to implement role-based account access control and encryption to protect your data. So keep your software updated and apply the principle of least privilege for user accounts.
and of course regularly back up your data and monitor database activity to stay secure. Implementing these best practices will help protect your databases from various threats and ensure the safety of your sensitive information. So I hope this helps. Let me know if you have any question. With this, let's move to the next lesson.